So once again, we're going to begin with the ovarian cycle. With the ovarian cycle, the follicular phase is taking place from menstruation to ovulation, which is from day 1 to day 14. The luteal phase occurs from days 14 to days 28. This is from ovulation to right before menstruation. You're going to need to remember that the ovarian cycle includes the follicular and the luteal phases. So if you think about this, the abbreviations are OFL. It's the ovarian follicular luteal phase, okay? For the ovarian cycle, this diagram is going to be very important. And you want to have this diagram set aside while we're going through the next slide. So dealing with the ovarian cycle, you know we're working with the ovary and what's happening or what's occurring in the ovary with the development of the ovum. And so the numbers on this diagram that are inside this ovary, one, two, three, four, and so on, correspond to the numbers on your next slide. When you look at this flow chart, there are numbers within the flow chart, and those numbers correspond to the numbers that you see here on this chart, as well as the numbers on the previous slide. And that way you can link this information together. Since we're working on the menstrual cycle in general, okay, that's the big picture, and we've got the two cycles, we've got a uterine cycle and we have an ovarian cycle. So when is all this occurring? When does this start in a female's life? Think back to the slide on oogenesis. So in oogenesis, there were three phases. There was the fetal development, there was ovulation, and after fertilization. So what you should realize is that we are beginning here at puberty. So this menstrual cycle is what starts to occur at puberty. So at puberty, are we dealing with a primary oocyte or a secondary oocyte or an oogonia? What are we starting with if we're beginning this at puberty? So you should say that we're beginning with a primary oocyte because remember in fetal development, you have the development of, or meiosis one begins, but it's arrested once the primary oocyte develops. And so that meiotic period that's arrested starts again at puberty. So this primary oocyte is what we will begin with at puberty. So let's go through the ovarian cycle first. So once again, this includes the follicular and the luteal phases. We're going to start with the first phase, which is the follicular phase. So we begin with follicles. Remember, a follicle contains a developing ovum. So the follicle is going to be in this phase called the primordial follicle. And that's listed as number one on your diagram. The whole thing is called a primordial follicle. The developing ovum inside is called the primary oocyte. Now the follicular phase on this primordial follicle, or the, rather the follicular cells, are located on the outside of the primordial follicle. So these are the follicular cells. The follicular cells start to develop around this oocyte, and you can see them around that primary oocyte. Those follicular cells are then going to differentiate into another type of cell called granulosa cells. Once that primordial follicle has those granulosa cells, we're going to change the name of the follicle. The follicle is now going to be called a primary follicle. So this is what you're seeing in number two. The oocyte is still a primary oocyte. Now the stage of development then is called a preantral stage of development. Once we have those granulosa cells, they're going to secrete what's called the zona pellucida. Your granulosa cells will develop into the zona pellucida. Now, the zone, zona pellucida is going to differentiate to form what are called the theca cells. So now we have these theca cells. Now, some of these cells don't go beyond development any longer. Now, remember, this is happening at puberty, so we're talking about a primary oocyte, right, per month that's going through this development. Some of your follicles will continue developing and form a fluid-filled cavity called the antrum. So this is now called a secondary follicle. And it's an er also called an early antral follicle or the early antral stage. Some follicles don't develop beyond this stage either. When the follicle is either preantral or early antral, one of them is selected to develop to maturity. 
The follicle that's selected to develop to maturity is called the dominant follicle. Development continues, and now what we have is what's called a late antral stage or a late antral follicle. And that antrum, look at how much larger it is now in this diagram, much larger. So it's continued to grow. Some of the granulosa cells of this layer will form the corona radiata. So that's sort of this rough looking layer here that surrounds that primary oocyte. Then there's also the cumulus O forest. And now, after all of this happens, we have what's called a graphene follicle. All right, once the graphene follicle has formed, meiosis one is completed. Remember in the slide on oogenesis, when meiosis one was completed, you were left with a secondary oocyte. So we're no longer dealing with the primary oocyte, now we're dealing with the secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte is gonna be floating freely in the antrum, all right? So you can see from this diagram where the oocyte, where the primary oocyte was, it moves in the antrum. This is now a secondary oocyte that's floating freely. Now we're starting the luteal phase. That's the last phase of the ovarian cycle. So the graphene follicle ruptures. So if we move this up just a little bit here, you can see how the follicle is rupturing. So here's our secondary oocyte, and here, here's what's left over. This is the, the entire thing would be called the follicle. All right, so when that ruptures, the secondary oocyte enters the uterine tube. Remember, it's always the secondary oocyte that enters the uterine tube. All right, now what's left to the follicle, the rest of the follicle? So that gets transformed into what's called the corpus luteum. So that corpus luteum is gonna secrete estrogen and progesterone, which we're gonna talk about more later, but always keep in mind, corpus luteum secretes estrogen and progesterone. If the oocyte is not fertilized, the corpus luteum will degenerate and you're left with what's called the corpus albicans. Because you don't have the corpus luteum, the levels of estrogen and progesterone then are gonna decrease and then that sets the stage for the follicular phase to occur all over again in the following month.